Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today it's going to be another Blitzwolf day. I've received this SHP7 dual European smart socket from Banggood free of charge for this review video. And if you follow my channel you know that I'm quite a big fan of Blitzwolf and it looks like that it, while also in the smart uh, home range if I check Blitzwolf sites every you know six months or so there are you know tons of new products that are being released and they seem to cater quite a lot for the European market because we have seen quite a lot of uh, different plug designs with the European socket and this is just another European sort of like this safe saver socket so you you know plug it in into this side and then you get two uh, sockets on the other side and both of them can be controlled over your smartphone well obviously this is a smart plug and it also provides uh, power measurement uh, the power measurement is total on both of those plugs so you don't get you know separate power measurement for the two outlets but you can still you know measure how much uh, power is being drawn from these two outlets i haven't taken this unit apart it says in the documentation that it is rated for 16 amps total, but then it also says 16 amps for each of them. So I think there is a 16 amp relay inside, but obviously these kind of plugs uh, support 16 amps in total as well. So, but I think at least it is safe for homes where your main circuit breakers are 16 amps. And because this is a Blitzwolf product, it is going to work with the Blitzwolf app, but also works with the Tuya and the Smart Life app. And I prefer Tuya out of these three, so I will be reviewing this uh, product using the Tuya Smart app. And to be honest, I'm a big fan of this space saver design, because with this 45 degree extension lead, one, once you plug it into one of the outlets, then the, the one next to it gets blocked. But if you happen to have those, you know, dual uh, wall sockets where you have like two sockets next to each other, if you plug into one of these, then the other one becomes free. So if you have like two outlets and you want to use two of these, then you can have like four outlets in a very uh, short space. So it is really, you know, like a space saver device. And since it is plugged in, let's go around and then look at uh, the device and how it looks from all sides as you can see there is two button on the side and if i push then this is how i can operate the outlets there is a small arrow so this arrow is pointing up so the right button controls the top outlet and the left controls the button one besides the red indicator lights on the side there is also a blue led which shines through these uh, two ports and that is blinking when you are uh, pairing the device with your tuya or smart life or blitzwolf app and when you get it out of the box and you plug it in for the first time it goes to pairing mode straight away so you don't really have to do anything blitzwolf always had a minimalistic box design so you are getting the box there is this uh, feedback leaflet which contains you know websites and um, what is it twitter accounts and email addresses if you want to leave a feedback and there is a multi-language user manual which mine got a little bit battered in the box but it comes in these languages and it just takes you through the basics of you know how you pair it with the app and i think they use the smart life app as an example but to be honest they look pretty much the same anyway so it's going to be the same regardless which companion app you decide to use i've already done the pairing but um, to be honest it was really simple you click on the plus button on the top right and then you select Wi-Fi socket, which is in the, the top left, and you just follow the on-screen instructions. And since I used the Tuyar app last time, or since I paired a product last time, because in the setup process, there are like multiple screens where they actually show you with a small video how you get into pairing mode, how you validate that the LED is blinking. But other than that, the process is exactly the same as it was before. And once I pair the SHP7, it appears in my list of devices as you can see here and if i go into the detail screen that's how it's going to look like so i have the two switch faces you know switch one and switch two and both of them are on at the moment i can turn them off separately and then they just appear as gray but then you know the rest of the screen remains sort of like this darker shade of gray and you also have like a main power button so if you want to turn off both of the outlets at the same time or actually on you can do it here and as you can see the uh, red led goes off if i start you know switching the outlet on and off 
So let's go through the main user interface quickly. Besides the two switches, you have uh, labels, which at the moment says switch one and switch two. And there is an icon next to it, so you can rename them. So that's fine, you can give it different names based on what you're using it for. And then we have three options here. We have schedule, countdown, and electricity. Schedule is your usual schedule. You can do it per outlet and you can specify what hour and minute you want the device to either turn on or off. You can specify which day of the week. You can, uh, you can leave a note as well. Okay, I don't want to know. You can also have a notification. So if you want to have a separate notification on, you know, that the schedule turn off your outlet. And of course, you can specify whether this schedule is an on schedule or an off schedule. So you can define multiple of these for each of the outlets separately. And once you switch the outlet on, for example, this one, you can use the countdown. So this is the manual sleep options. So after two minutes, oops, two minutes, let's say the device should turn off. And um, if you remember, this slider here in the top is actually not the, you know, the state, what should happen after two minutes, but it's whether you want to enable or disable this one. So as you can see, the device will be off after two minutes. And you can have one of these for each of the outlet. So that outlet is going to turn off after two minutes. And this information is also shown here on the main screen. And the third option here on the main screen is electricity. And I also brought a few devices so we can test the electricity consumption. By the way, two minutes has passed. So as you can see, switch one was already switched off by the countdown option. We just missed that in the recording. Onto switch one, I have a small desk lamp plugged in, which has a really small LED bulb on it. I think it's only two watts or something like that. And this one has a fan. And if I go into electricity at the moment, you can see that the lamp is on but it is showing zero watts and zero uh, milliamps uh, usage. So it is not able to detect really, really low consumptions. Just to go back to the main screen. So on the top, you see the today electricity consumption. So this is 0 0.01 kilowatt hours. You have the current, uh, well, electric current, which is zero milliamp hours, zero watts, and the accumulated consumption, which is basically like a lifetime consumption since you started using this device. And you also have a monthly breakdown because I just started using this device. I only have September, but maybe in a, you know, a couple of weeks, I would have September or October as well. And if you go into this, you are also getting a graph throughout that month, how much was used in each day. And it shows in a, in a nice graph. I haven't found any export functionality, so you can only look at this data on the screen and if you want to log it, well, you have to get a pen and paper and then get it out. So as I said, it is struggling with really low consumption and this is why I brought a fan around. So I'm going to turn on the fan as well and we are going to see how it looks like on the electricity consumption page. I'm just going to turn it off after a while because it gets a little bit loud. So the fan is now on and as you can see, it now properly measures current and power as well. And of course, all this will get added to the today's electricity consumption and the total electricity consumption. And that's all about the main app features. If I go into the settings, we are not going to see a lot of here. I mean, most of the settings are on the main screen anyway. You can rename the device if you want. You can change the icon, you can change the name and the location. So which room it is or in which house you have some device information. You also have an option to look at all the scenes that you have created with this device. As you can see, it works with Alexa and Google Assistant and IFTTT. You can enable on offline notification for this device if you want to. And the sharing option is here. So you can share this device with other Tuya users. So they would be able to control it. You can also group this device. So the group devices will automatically share their states. So it would act like, like a two-way switching or a three-way switching. And the rest of the information is just like, yeah, feedback and you can add it to the home screen. And you can also check the firmware update, which is, is always up to date. I've never seen a firmware update in the Tui app. So these are the device options and the device settings within the Tui app. And if I go back, by the way, you always have to come to this main screen to operate the switches because there are no small icons available here in this screen. And the only thing which is left to discuss is what's available in automation. So I'm clicking on smart and I'm going to click on automation and I'm going to click, well, tap to run or automation. I'm going to create a new automation. 
So I'm going to click on the plus button and I just quickly go through the various options like the triggers and the actions that are available via for the SHP7. So on the trigger side you can set up triggers when the device status changes, so SHP7. And as we can see we have quite a few options and just like with other Blitz 4 devices I can't really explain some of these options because they don't really make sense based on you know what I see on the screen but you can definitely set up an action if either switch one or switch two or basically any of the outlets get turned off or turned on so that's good and I think probably the other most used scenario is going to be the power so you can set up a scene if the power draw of on this device based on any of the outlets let's say exceed a certain watt then you can do something so you can have a fail safe or a protection logic built in uh, using automation so if the device whatever device you plug in here draws above a certain wattage then you can turn it off and you can also do this with you know current and voltage don't ask me what the test bit is and also don't ask me what these coes are because i wasn't able to find any documentation on that so these are all the triggers and let's see what we can set up on the action side so this is the second half of the automation so i'm going to click on run device and again shp7 and just as we thought we can operate any of the switches so we can uh, specifically set up switch one or switch two to do something and we can say whether it should be turned on or should be turned off or well, there is this on and off and i've tested it and that actually toggle so that's also quite good that we have a separate toggle option here and of course you have the same for you know switch one and switch two as well to be honest i have no idea what the countdown and the electricity is because it doesn't really make sense for me to have these and i and I did add this to various automations, but I couldn't really figure out how it can be used. And actually, I also set up a, just a simple automation where I just wanted to test this on and off function. So as you can see, now the switch one on and off has tr been triggered and the, the lamp is now on. And if I do it again, the lamp comes on. Sorry, the lamp was off and now the lamp comes on. So that on off option is really like a toggle option, which is nice because you can easily flip the status of the output without knowing what the previous status was. So I think this would be my review of the Blitzwolf SHP7. If you like this product, you are going to find Banggood links in the video description. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.